So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Afghanistan Food Security Outlook Briefing. We'll be covering the June 2023 to January 2024 period. In today's briefing, we'll go through FuseNet's approach to early warning analysis. We'll go through an overview of I the IPC scale version 3.1, a few key messages, and then an overview of Fusen FuseNet's analysis for Afghanistan. So looking at FuseNet's approach to early warning analysis, we use a method called scenario development to produce our projections of acute food insecurity up to eight months in the future. We start by selecting a population group and analyzing how their livelihood system allows them to produce or purchase their minimum food needs. And then we develop evidence-based assumptions about how ongoing or expected shocks will affect their ability to do that. These assumptions feed into our analysis, which put in the most simple terms, is an analysis of the extent to which household food and income will or won't cover their food needs over the coming months. This is then translated, translated into our food security projections. So to classify the severity of acute food insecurity, FuseNet uses the Global Integrated Phase Classification Scale. The scale consists of five levels of severity, phase one being minimal, phase two being stress where households minimally at, have adequate food consumption, but they're unable to afford their non-food needs. And at levels three and above, known as crisis IPC phase three, emergency IPC phase four, and catastrophe IPC phase five, Households need urgent food assistance to prevent or mitigate the severity of food consumption gaps and acute malnutrition. When at least 20% of the population in a given area is expecting the conditions that define a certain IPC phase, then we map that phase. When we start seeing rising levels of acute malnutrition and mortality, this indicates people have already sustained food consumption gaps for a while. If food consumption gaps are sustained over time, this leads to worsening acute malnutrition outcomes, which can be begin to occur at phase three. Phase four, or emergency, reflects that if food consumption gaps and rising acute malnutrition are sustained over time, this, lends, this then leads to an atypical increase in mortality. An assessment of both acute malnutrition and mortality should consider the degree to which non-food factors like low access to clean water and disease incidents are playing a role. So now taking a look at FuseNet's key messages for our outlook through January 2024. Overall, FuseNet anticipates acute food security conditions in late 2023 into early 2024 to be better than that observed during the same period of 2022-2023. This is due to a combination of factors, including the wheat harvest being better than in 2022, the expectation for stable food market supply, as well as declines in food prices. However, due to declines in livestock herd sizes due to consecutive droughts, as households excessively sold livestock and the continued ec economic barriers in the country, large scale improvement in acute food insecurity conditions is not likely. During the harvesting and post-harvest period, stressed IPC phase two are expected to be widespread across the country. Although in the areas of highest concern, which include Samangan and Baghdis provinces, as well as areas of Jazjan, and then in many urban areas, crisis IPC phase three outcomes are likely. In these rural areas, the harvest is only expected to last through August with households having increasing consumption deficits and low income, particularly from a key income source from livestock. From October onward, as and as winter sets in, crisis outcomes are expected to become widespread across the northern areas, which were affected by the drought in 2022 and 2023, as well as the, high, the highlands of the center and northeast of the country due to minimal food stocks from the harvest and, a, and high reliance on, in, on income, which is expected to be seasonally low. So now taking a look at the current situation and the current conditions in Afghanistan. So the current situation is focused in June, where in the lower elevated areas of the country, the harvest was ongoing 
and about to finish, and we are about to see the start of the harvest in the upper elevated areas. Additionally, planting for the second season is typically ongoing. So first, we're going to take a look at the economic conditions in the country as the ongoing economic conditions are one of the main drivers of acute food insecurity in the country. And despite some of the modest improvements and stability in economic conditions, Afghanistan's economy generally remains poor after severely contracting in 2021. The removal of Afghanistan from the international banking community and low government revenue continues to result in liquidity challenges and limited government limited government investment. Now the graphic on the left is showing us the value of the Afghan Afghani over time from January 2021 to June 2022. We've seen in recent months broad stability in the Afghani. This is due to tight controls on the currency, increased remittances, and the availability of the U.S. dollar within the country due to con continued cash shipments, which are predominantly from the U.N. Now, Afghanistan heavily imports food, notably wheat, from Kazakhstan. And since Kazakhstan has lifted its import ban in September of 2022, exports have resumed to normal levels, which has helped facilitate the movement of goods into the country. But additionally, the stability of the Afghan currency, has, and as well as that traders are mostly operate in USD, this has helped su to support sufficient funds for normal imports. Additionally, diesel prices, as you can see by the chart on the left, have declined in recent months. The chart on the left is showing diesel prices on average nationally from January 2021 to June 2023. Now, the decline in diesel prices has helped lower food prices across much of the country as the fuel prices has decreased transportation costs. And fuel is mainly imported from Afghan to Afghanistan from Turkmenistan, and the lower diesel prices are attributed to the lower crude oil prices within Turkmenistan. Now taking a look at annual headline inflation, as well as food and basic, um, basic household good inflation. And this graph is showing inflation from July 2021 through May 2023. Now, according to the latest available data, which is from May 2023, we've seen national annual headline inflation drop to a negative 2.8%. The drop in the annual headline inflation is mainly due to the decrease in annual food inflation that is support from that from declines in global food prices, the stability in the Afghan Afghani, and the start of the harvest, which has helped support stable market supply. Now taking a look at food prices in Afghanistan. Now this chart is showing the cost of the minimum food basket, excluding salt in Kabul from January 2021 to June 2023. The minimum food basket as developed by WFP includes wheat flour, rice, a pulse, and cooking oil. Now overall in recent months, we've seen a decline in the total cost of the minimum food basket. And by looking at the chart on the right, you can see that from since the beginning of this year in January, 2023, compared to June, of 2023, we've seen a nearly 20% drop in the food basket. We've also seen a decline from the three-year average in the food basket, as well as a, the similar value of the food basket in um, Kabul as compared to prior to the Taliban takeover of Kabul in August of 2021. Now, the, there is some variation in food prices across the country and in some more remote markets outside of urban areas and away from source markets, staple food prices are, are likely somewhat higher than what we see in Kabul, although it is likely that prices in these remote markets continue to follow national trends. 
So taking a look next at the purchasing power for unskilled laborers and pastoralists on average across Afghanistan from January 2021 to June 2023. Now the purchasing power among those who have sheep to sell and are able to access a casual or labor have increased in the first part of 2023 and have reached similar levels to that of similar to prior to the Taliban takeover of Kabul. Although we do, similar to food prices, see variation of purchasing power and the trends in purchasing power across the country. We have seen that the wheat to labor terms of trade are somewhat lower in areas of Dekundi, Zabul, and Ninmroz provinces. But on the contrary, we see that the terms of trade for wheat to labor is actually more favorable in areas like Pekar, Kapsipa, Bamiyan, Parwan, and Farrar provinces. Now, nationally, on average, for a day's work, and assuming that a household comprises of eight people, and a household only uses that, that day's labor to purchase wheat grain with their income, a household can purchase about 10.5 kgs of food, which would last them around three weeks. And as, sim as similar to the wheat flour to daily wage rate, we have seen an increase in the terms of trade for livestock to wheat on average. And we see that the livestock terms of trade are nearly 50% higher than in June 2022. Although similar to that purchasing power for the wheat for wheat flour for purchase with one days of labor there is variation across the country so now taking a look at casual labor demands now labor opportunities typically seasonally peak in about the april to september period as construction related employment in urban areas and agriculture employment in rural areas in increase now, despite expectations for a below average harvest, agricultural labor opportunities have improved, as has construction related opportunities in urban areas. As shown on the chart here, we can see in the orange line that we've seen a steady increase in the number of days available for, for work across early 2023, and we are now seeing near, num near average levels. Now, declines in the available label, labor in the formal sector before August 2021, when the government changed, resulted in hundreds of thousands of households joining the informal labor market, increasing overall labor competition. Now, many households remain outside of the formal labor market and are continue to be in that casual labor market. And we are seeing that in many cases that labor demand cannot keep up with the labor supply. And so that we, we often see that there are many households who continue to face difficulty accessing casual labor, even though we are seeing the availability of labor increase. And it is also worth noting that in June with the Eid al-Daya holiday, that there was a notable increase in availability, in availability of wage work opportunities associated with the holiday within that week. So now taking a look to precipitation and precipitation in the country is the second one of this is kind of the second key driver of acute food insecurity conditions in the country. So this year marked the third consecutive drought predominantly in northern areas. Much of the country faced perception precipitation deficits for the October 2022 to May 2023 precipitation, which you can see here by the map on the left, which is showing generally light orange to darker orange colors. Near average rainfall was, was observed in some southern, central, and eastern areas of the country. And, and then where we also saw a good rainfall distribution in these areas. And while precipitation deficits were notable, precipitation in many areas of the country were slightly better than what we saw in 2022. Additionally, we saw precipitation 
that the precipitation that did fall facilitated planting and cropping development due to the generally good distribution of rainfall during the agricultural season. So for example, the chart on the right is showing the distribution of rainfall across the season in Sari Pool from October 2022 to May 2023. Now the precipitation generally followed a normal trend, even though it was slightly lower than average, which facilitated planting at the beginning of the season. Then in February to May, rain precipitation, which was shown in this box here, we the precipitation fell at key crop development stages during the wheat growing stage. Now taking another look at precipitation in the country. So the graphic on the left is the same precipitation graphic that we saw in the last slide, but we're now looking at the precipitation distribution of precipitation distribution in Bamyan province from October 2022 to May 2023. And Bamyan province is in the central highlands of the country. And similar to Sari Pool, the distribution of rainfall was favorable. Or the start of the season rainfall did facilitate or precipitation did facilitate planting as well as the favorable distribution of rainfall as seen by the green line here during the February to May period generally supported crop development across the country. So now taking a look at cropping conditions at the end of the 2022-2023 season. First, I'd like to make a comparison to where we stood at the same time in 2022. So the where we saw slightly poor conditions than we do now than we saw in June of 2023. So the map on the left is showing cropping conditions as of June 28th, 2022. Generally, we see poor conditions across much of the country. Now, based on this map is developed by GeoGlam and based on GeoGlam's analysis, crop when they issue poor conditions, it typically means that crop yields are likely to be 10 to 25% below average and is used when crops are stunted and are not likely to recover. Now, when we look at the map on the right, we're seeing, which is for crop conditions as of June 28th, 2023, we see generally yellow colors across most of the country, which is indicative of watch conditions. Now, GeoGlam uses the watch conditions when the conditions are not far from average, but there's potential risk to the final production. And we saw many positive and negative implications on crop production during the growing season. So during the growing season, some of the negative implications on crop production included that below average, the overall below average rainfall we saw for the season, Moroccan locusts, which were present in northern parts of the country, high temperatures and the early snow melt, which prevented water availability for many of the irrigated crops. And while we did see these ne negative implications, there were many positives that we saw during this season that made this season better than last year. And this includes, we saw increased wheat planting, notably in the South, due to the replacement of poppy cultivation with wheat, somewhat favorable rainfall distribution during the spring season, low levels of flooding in riverine areas, which actually less led to less destruction of crops and that near average rainfall in central, southern and eastern Afghanistan. So now looking to the production estimates at the national level. On this chart is showing production estimates from USDA by year from 2014 to 2023. Now Production, as we can see by the far bar on the right, is likely to be higher than we saw in 2022. The wheat harvest is largely complete in the lower elevated areas with the harvest starting to begin in starting in August as of now when and continue through September for the next coming months. 
And while production is, is expected to be below average in Afghanistan, Afghanistan is a typical deficit producing country. And while local production is helping to mitigate food consumption deficit, deficits among households and is currently available on the market, market supplies are supplemented by steady and regular imports, primarily for Kazakhstan, which keep market levels stable and help support the generally favorable prices we are seeing in the country. So taking a look to the vegetation conditions as a percent of normal from June 25th to July 5th. Now this graph shows largely yellow to dark brown colors, which is indicating below normal pasture availability across the country. And based on key inf information from key informants, there are areas of the north where we do see minimal pasture available due to the consecutive droughts we've seen in these areas. Now, due to the lower than normal pasture availability, we are seeing livestock migration start atypically early for as households search for pasture for their livestock. Now, in areas where households are unable to migrate or they are choosing not to migrate, they are accessing straw for the livestock as well as fodder. However, overall, due to the prices of fodder and straw, and the low and the below average income, we are seeing general access to fodder and straw decrease. Overall, low livestock body conditions in much of the country are lower than normal, especially in the northern areas of the country. However, we are seeing that some that most livestock body conditions are reported to be slightly better than what we've seen in the last year. And Overall, livestock herd sizes continue to be lower than normal due to the atypical selling during the past year's poorer seasons. And in the north, where livestock constitutes one of the primary livestock sources for many households, especially in our areas of highest concern, there is concern for the lack of fodder availability uh, due to the poor pasture conditions and poor production, as well as the low income for households to purchase fodder. Now taking a look at humanitarian assistance distributions across Afghanistan. And this graph is showing the number of beneficiaries that have received assistance from WFP from May 2020 to June 2023. Now since the Taliban takeover of Kabul, we've seen very high levels of humanitarian food assistance across Afghanistan. And WFP continues to distribute assistance across the country. We have seen in recent months assistance distributions decline. However, this is somewhat typical for this time of year, but we do note that the decline that we've seen in assistance is atypically large, and we are seeing assistance distributions at lower levels than we've seen in recent years. And WFP has reported that largely the declines in food assistance distribution is due to some funding constraints they are facing. And overall, we do remain concerned about the levels of diversion and some of, and the ability for humanitarians to reach some of those most in need. Among the populations that do receive assistance, food consumption gaps are likely mitigating food consumption deficits and, and possibly closing food consumption deficits among, benef among beneficiaries. So now looking at our assumptions for the projection period through January 2024. Now first, just to look at the seasonal calendar for Afghanistan and what typically occurs in the country from June to January. We see that the second season planting wraps up and then winter planting begins in the September through and continues through November as we see the onset of the winter precipitation season. And the, har the wheat and barley harvest continues through September where we see the harvest complete in September in those upper, upper elevated areas, as well as the start of the second season harvest of rice and maize. Livestock migration to lower elevated areas where pasture is generally more abundant typically starts in August. However, we've seen this already ongoing at this time of in June 
as and it has continued through July into August. Additionally, household stocks cereals for winter. So now taking a look at our key assumptions for the projection period. All we are overall why we're while we are expecting to see most key factors that impact acute food insecurity to be somewhat below normal, overall, most conditions are likely to be better than last year as we have started to see the market conditions stabilize. And also, FuseNet anticipates the prices of food and essential non food commodities to remain stable and near average, supported by the steady market supply from imports. And with the end to the La Nina conditions and our transition and with ongoing El Nino conditions and the expectation that these conditions are expected to persist, above average precipitation is most likely for the start of the October 2023 to the May 2024 precipitation season, which you can see by this, which is demonstrated by a multi-model ensemble forecast from NOAA is seen by the map on the right here. Now, overall, we expect that this will facilitate winter wheat planting and favorable, a, and favorable development of crops as we look into 2024. And staple food prices are expected to remain stable and near average, supported by the market supply that we've discussed previously. And key income sources like labor and livestock are, are likely to remain at lower than normal levels, but higher than in 2022. Although overall many income sources are likely to seasonally decline during the winter months as we typically see. And we expect remittances to continue at above average levels from Western countries. And we do expect a slight decline or lower than normal remittances from Gulf countries. Overall, humanitarian assistance will likely continue, but at lower levels than we've seen in recent years. Now taking a look at the projected food security outcomes for Afghanistan. First, we'll take a look at the map on the left, which is showing the projection for the June, 20, June to September 2023 period. Stressed outcomes are expected to be widespread across the country as many households have access to food from their own product, production or su sufficient income to meet their food needs. While most households are able to meet their food needs, they're expected to face some, they're expected to face difficulty in meeting all of their non-food needs as they're not able to earn sufficient income to meet all of those non-food needs. And it is expected that in some of these areas facing stressed outcomes, there will be some households facing crisis. And crisis outcomes are likely among, are expected in Baghdad, Samangan, and areas of Jazjan provinces due to low food and income access from crop production and livestock associated with the third consecutive droughts. Households in these provinces are expected to have a harvest that is only expected to last a maximum of two months and will consume and will is expected to be consumed by August. Additionally, in these provinces, reliance on income from livestock is high and terms of trade are likely to remain insufficient for households to purchase sufficient wheat to meet all of their food needs. Now, as we transition to the October 2023 to January 2024 period, we do expect more areas of the country to experience crisis outcomes. Crisis outcomes are expected in most northern drought affected areas, as well as the highlands of the northeast and center areas of the country. In these, in these areas, households will be mostly market reliant with lower than normal purchasing power due to the combination of the overall lower than normal purchasing power expected for that time of year as the winter season is ongoing. Additionally, access to markets is likely to be disrupted, especially in the highlands, due to the snowfall expected in December and in December and January. Now taking a look at food assistance needs across the projection period. 
food assistance needs in Afghanistan are likely to remain above average, but lower than during the same time observed in 2022-2023. In January 2024, 20 to 25 percent of the population is expected to be in need of humanitarian food assistance, and needs are expected to increase from July through at least January 2024, when we typically see the lean season begin in the country. Most of the needs in Afghanistan are expected to be concentrated in those northern drought-affected areas, the central and northeastern highlands, and urban areas of the country. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions that you may have.